Yeah, they say would put your heels on the 10 yard line, but when you return it, maybe your coach doesn't say anything to you, right? Yeah, I think a lot of special teams coach, if they've got a special guy, they'll say, yeah, okay, you can go to the eight. But this one, he really had some guts. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Extra point tacked on by Lambeau. And the lead is now 24. So after the punt return touchdown, let's see what their opponents can do with this kickoff. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. And still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. They're just looking for anything to grab onto right now, aren't they? I'm wondering if someone's going to take charge in the huddle. You know, we always look, and look to the quarterback, but sometimes it's another player on the team, a star, a veteran, someone with some excitement and energy. It's like, all right, guys, let's shake things up and let's go because they still have an opportunity to make things happen. Shake it off. Now on second and 13. Allen, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Josh Allen. Credit him with a sack as he buries him for a loss of 10. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. He's got his running back, LaShawn McCoy. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. A heck of a play there on third down, but amazingly, they're still short for fourth. Boy, they had a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big-time play for them. Nice completion, excellent game. Now they're in fourth and manageable. Just a little short, though, with that marker. A very good return there. Give him an even 20 yards. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. Now Minshew. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. So they come out of the locker room trailing, but plays like that, they won't be trailing much longer. Defense really starting out well this second half. Yeah, they knew they had to jumpstart things a little bit. They really struggled in the first half trying to slow them down, but now they had a plan, made that adjustment that we always talk about, and it worked very well on that play. And he finally is out of bounds, but he's down inside the 20-yard line. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Now Leonard Fournette. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Scampering home from 19 yards out as his guys continue to pour it on. And as many coaches' meetings as we sit in, we hear the word finish all the time, don't we? And on that play, the back actually finished getting into the end zone, breaking the last tackle. Tried to wrap up, tried to use the proper technique, just wasn't able to get it done. Lambo to add on the extra point. And they're able to up the lead by one more. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And the capper, a 19-yard touchdown run. And Lambeau now, after the touchdown, he'll kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And his guys are going to start their drive right at the 20-yard line. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly, because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Here's Allen. Oh, Allen cannot get away, and down he goes. Calais Campbell in there to bury him for a loss of 11. Needs something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Back now in Jacksonville. 
And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Fielded at the 43. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. Now the Jags will have great field position to start this drive as they take over on the short side of the field. Throwing on first down is Minshew. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Tredavious White, the LSU man there to knock it away that time. Fournette running out of the gun. And another mistake here defensively as a flag is down on the tackle. And that's going to tack on 15 more. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration, not a good play. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. So we got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. From the 16, Minshew to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Keelan Cole, the intended target, and it's third and five. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Fourth quarter, you've got the big lead. If you're coaching, Charles, you, you still taking shots like that downfield? I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because you keep flinging it around, you throw a couple of picks, you can put yourself in jeopardy. Looking to throw it, Minshew. And that is caught, but the back judge right there to say incomplete. The Jags come up empty on fourth down. And the Bills are going to get the football back. So they were really trying to put the nail in the coffin there already with this lead here in the fourth, but they didn't get it. Guaranteed, it's not going to be a fun handshake in the postgame, right? <laughs> All right? You just know that there's going to be some bad blood there. And I know if we go to the postgame press conferences, the, the winning coach, you know what he's going to say, why he did it? We need the points, okay? Because you never know at the end of the year if points are going to come into the tiebreaker if we're trying to get into the playoffs. That's always the standard justification. And now he's going to use his legs. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Looking to throw again on second down. Allen, and he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. He was trying to get it to LaShawn McCoy, and it's third and short. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. But that's complete to Croft. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 15 yards that time, and a Buffalo first. Allen now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. From the gun, it's Allen. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Zay Jones was the intended receiver. And it's second down. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. To throw again. Allen toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. That one was intended for John Brown. And now it's third down. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Allen going to leave it on the draw for McCoy. And they do get this across midfield of the 49, but a small consolation prize as he's well short of the first. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Bill's football here as we get you reset. They come up on a fourth down situation with things not looking particularly rosy. And now a high kick here as he'll try to hang it up there. 
31 yards on the punt there. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. When, when do you go to the backup, let him get some time? And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, just don't really do that in the NFL. You know, these guys play, and we just play them all the way through. Now, in certain situations, they will take them out. But for the most part, they're not as worried and concerned about getting them out of the game. And that's always puzzled me a little bit. The Jaguars are going to go ahead and use their first timeout. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. The catch made by James O'Shaughnessy, the tight end. That's now a pair of explosive plays in succession, both north of 20 yards. Well, go ahead and throw the ball, man. You got the big lead. You got the clock on your side. Obviously, they don't care much about the feelings of the other team, do they? Well, I was going to say, you better run to the locker room pretty quick after this one. Well, right now, maybe. They're just looking at it from the fantasy perspective. More points for everyone if they win big. Now a play fake here on first down. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. They're still throwing the football here, and obviously the incompletion stops the clock. That's a bad thing. Feels to me like they're just keeping them honest on defense because you know they're going to stack the line of scrimmage and try and stop any type of a running play. Short little passes may work in exchange of running plays. Keep the clock moving. Keep them. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. He has really settled in throwing the football, and that touchdown here in the fourth quarter gives him a pretty comfortable cushion. He may be a rookie, but he's playing like fourth quarter, and the QB is easy. How about this guy? Youngster, not worried about anything, just cutting it loose and having fun. Yeah, this play is not going to work. He's out of bounds, well shy of the goal line, and a try for two, unsuccessful. And the Bills are going to recover. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. On play action, Allen. And he comes back with one complete. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Allen. And he'll check this one down to McCoy. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Four down, four down. Allen off the play fake. Allen hit. He lost the football. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this is intercepted, but they'll say out of bounds. So very close to a turnover there in the end zone. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. He's going to let it fly. And that will be incomplete. They were going for a consolation TD, but it was not to be. And time has run out now on this game. So this will be a win for Jacksonville. And I tell you what, Charles, this might be about as good as it gets. They were incredible. Yeah, offense was in fine form. The defense 
through the shutout, Adam. I think they worked in concert together. What I like about the offense was they held the ball pretty well. You know, time of possession, exactly what they were looking for in this one, and that helped out their defense. Didn't have to be out there the entire time.